Hi everyone, welcome back and welcome to my channel. Good to see you again and nice to meet you. I'm Manx and this is a video that I want to do a continuation of. Um, maybe it was a little too soon after the first one, but I do think it's a good one, especially for this time of year. I want to do a series of unique shades in terms of makeup and this could range from eyeshadow, uh, lipsticks, blush, you name it. Um, but in like I want to focus on a singular shade each time. Uh, there might become a time where I have unique shades in general and typically you know maybe those would be like the duochromes or like the one and dones or what have you. But I want to really focus in on a shade per video. So my first one was looking at the color mustard and today I want to look at the color red. Uh, especially now like around the holidays people probably are wearing like red lipsticks or even like red eyeshadows or, like maybe there's glitter I think people are feeling a little bit more adventuresome in their makeup and beauty these days because uh, you know there's especially with indie companies and even mainstream companies have given almost like a permission especially when they're like already in palettes palettes themselves when they're already kind of pre-done pre-made and you don't have to think about things people are more apt to be um, thinking outside the box in terms of of what they want to wear. Also, people are just a little bit more, I think, comfortable wearing color these days versus, you know, the neutrals and then which is nothing wrong with that. When I'm at work, I'll probably typically wear a neutral eye. Um, but there's some times where I want to kind of jazz it up a little bit. Jazz hands. <laughs> so today I wanted to, again, as I mentioned, look at the shade red. Red is pretty much iconic with lipstick. I think red lipstick has been around for as long as lipstick has been around, pretty much. Uh, it is, it kind of gained popularity, especially in wartime and in, you know, you see them in uh, movies, uh, very much iconic red lipstick. Uh, it also kind of harkens back to, you know, why we're putting lipstick on and it's just kind of evokes you know sensuality sexuality power and confidence um and there's definitely red lipstick personalities out there red for eyeshadows is something a little bit newer now there's probably been like subculture type uh you know uh, punk and uh, emo and so forth that have been wearing red for a lot longer uh in terms of makeup other than lipstick for many 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 years However, it hasn't been mainstream as it is now. So, and also the accessibility of finding good shades has also been problematic. In addition to that, it's red can be also very irritating color uh, and staining. So a combination of those, I think, in the formulations have improved and evolved and are just so much more sophisticated than once they, like once were. So I wanna talk about uh, first and foremost, the palette that I feel kind of gave encouragement as well as permission to wear um, red and the whole spectrum of it. This to me isn't a true red palette, but it does have, I think it started it all. I could be wrong, but for me, this is how, you know, this is what I feel like. And it's, you know, my channel. So <laughs> anyway, so this is the modern Renaissance. I'm sure people are very well versed and familiar with this particular palette. Love Letter, Venetian Red, and Red Ochre are the reds in it. Now, to me, they are not a true red. Um, they're definitely more of a burgundy pink kind of leaning um, colors, which also is just kind of like, you know, a little bit more comfortable, I think, with these kind of colors. I think coppers are also, if you wanted to get into wearing those types of reds and get comfortable, though that is a nice color to wear. So these here... And I do feel once this came out and then the, their next launch, which was Subculture, also had some more kind of interesting, grungier tones. Um, they paved the way for more and more mainstream and indie companies to include unique shades within their palettes. Just my opinion. I also feel like Lime Crime also allowed for that. I want to look at, at this point, at single shadows because I think you know palettes are fine but I don't want people to you know necessarily go out and buy a palette for one shade if you can find a good red because if that's the shade that you're looking for I do have some in my collection that I feel would be really really good and then I'm going to look at palettes that have red in them because you might already have them or they might be you know inexpensive enough to warrant buying it if you want to buy something I'm not encouraging you to buy but um 
you know, just wanted to address this particular color. So one of my favorite red eyeshadows uh, is a true, true red. And when I want a red, I want a true red. I don't want a burgundy. I don't want a pinky red. I want a red. And one of my favorite, and actually one of my favorite companies, um, is Illamasqua. And this is the color Damon. And this is a creamy matte texture. I love this. It's pigmented. You need it very little and it's very saturated. Now with reds, I think sort of part of the problem is that they can blend away into almost like a pinky tone. I do find this one stays pretty true to its color, but with any red, you can blend away if you keep blending and blending and blending and blending. And eventually it's going to end up kind of a, a pinkier version of it. This one is basically a classic medium tone crimson scarlet red. Um, I say more crimson than scarlet because I feel scarlet is more on an orangier tone. Crimson, you know, neutral to cool leaning. Um, and I love this shade. I wore this the other day. Stunning. The next one um, is from Sugar Pill. And this, uh, for me, was the first time I bought an absolute red shadow. Um, and this is part of their Pro palette. Um, each of these, uh, I, you know, as you can see, I have some holes here. Um, they have, to me, they were the first kind of indie brand, um, other than maybe Inglot that had a true red and made it, uh, wearable. And as I said, accessible, um, what is this shade? I think this is flame, flame something. I can't remember, but, um, I don't know if they still have this available. I do find Sugar Pills formulations, especially their mattes, can't really speak to their shimmers as much, even though I do have a few here. Um, their mattes are stiffer, um, a little less creamy, but they are pigmented and quite saturated. You just have to kind of, way you approach these would be very different than how you approach a creamier type of shadow. You want to place and then blend minimally, place and then kind of blend and place and blend. You don't want to just keep, you just want to put, pack, and then leave it be kind of a thing. So at least that's how I find with these particular shadows. So I love these reds. This is a little bit more of a medium tone, a little bit warmer, uh, less cool tone than the Damon one from Illamasqua, but it's still like a true red in, in my eyes. So those are some singles from there. I do have some Mac pro palette ones. Um, I looked through my Inglot and makeup geek and, um, other ones. I feel like my red quota is pretty good right now. So I don't feel like I need to buy anymore, but I do have one from Sydney grace and this is a queen of hearts. It's absolutely stunning. It's a black base, uh, red with kind of a coppery red over top. Uh, it's a shimmer, but it's not so metallic that it draws attention to any kind of texture or kind of, um, if you don't have super smooth eyelids, you're going to be okay. Uh, this is a beautiful one, very smooth and creamy. These next two down here at the bottom are Max powder kiss matte formulation. They're a little bit more, they're softer and more diffuse. They're not going to be incredibly vivid or like super saturated, even though uh, I do find they're quite nice. They're um, softer to touch. Um, and you just don't want to blend them away or they're going to blend away to nothing. So I have work, 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 which is kind of more of a, I would say a medium tone, uh, scarlet kind of shade it's but it has pinkiness to it this one here is so oat right now it's definitely more of a bricky kind of a red to it um it's terracotta kind of red and then this one up here is also from mac it's called ruddy this has more of like a shimmer based to it and definitely more kind of like the shimmer version of this one it definitely has a warmth to it more of a bricky kind of terracotta Another one from Mac is this is Holly Folly. This is a frost. This is very similar to Queen of Hearts by Sydney Grace. Again, with that black base, shimmery top, and kind of a coppery red tone to it. It's going to give you a very similar effect. Um, I already mentioned that one. And then I think those are it for my singles. 
let's talk about what's in palettes already for reds. So uh, if you have, if you were very fortunate to get the a more Eterno uh, collection from Melt, then you have two beautiful reds already. Well, this one is Mexicana, and this one is uh, more of an orangey kind of corally red, uh, especially if you just want kind of a vibrant punch. I think that is absolutely stunning. Um, and then the next one in the Muerte palette is Corazon. Um, and this one definitely is more of a medium kind of pinky red um, and paired well with these kind of burgundy wine colors. Um, both are, believe, are mattes and very, very beautiful on the, on the eyelid, but be, get, be careful blending them away because they will blend away sometimes to a different shade than what you really want. Um, oh, I did forget a palette. How could I forget? I forgot it again. This is the Cherry on Top by BH Cosmetics Sweet Shop series. And um, this is a monochromatic pink, or monochromatic red. I think, I haven't tried the other ones, although I do have the blue and the green the pistachio bubblegum respectively coming towards me. Um, but it's gonna be here for, you're not here for a while. Um, this, when I was mentioning earlier about how things kind of sometimes blend away to pink or just change the color that you want to, um, that's in the pan, this is going to be a good example of that. So again, blend judiciously. <laughs> uh, tart is going to be a true red kind of color. Um, sometimes it goes a little pink on me, but um, I think it depends on what I'm pairing it with. Sprinkles is a nice deep, dark, burgundy, almost like oxblood kind of color. Um, but again, if you blend it too much, it's going to blend away to kind of a pinky tone. Uh, Wild Cherries definitely has more of an oranger, warmer kind of tone to it. And then you have your shimmer, st uh, shimmer colors here. They're looking quite red in the viewfinder, but I do find this definitely has more of a coppery tone to it. Black Cherry, Marchino is definitely a pinkier red. And then Juicy has like a golden shimmer to it, making it more of a warmer kind of kind of red. I've used this beautiful quality, beautiful formulation. This is like 18 Canadian, I want to say, or maybe 18 American, but nonetheless, I think the palette is worth it. And it may be all that you need in terms of your red kind of search. <laughs> um, okay. Let's talk about some other eye products. I have have one on the waterline right now. This is the first time using it. This is from Lethal Cosmetics, uh, very new to my collection. Uh, this is a gel liner in the shade Q. It's part of their uh, Velvet Dusk, so new release. Um, and so far, so good. It's staying put. Um, yeah, because I have huge problems with uh, liners lasting on my waterline, but this is pretty damn good. On a similar vein, it would be the Suva Beauty Hydro Liner. This is the shade Cherry Bomb. You need uh, water to activate or like a liquid. This is definitely more of a warmer kind of, as the name would imply, cherry type color. Um, and then there are some other kind of pigments I have. This is from Sydney Grace. This is more of definitely a burgundy um, pigment. Has a little bit of finely milled shimmer in it. This is in the shade Foiled. I have Copper Glitter from MAC, it's going to be similar to um, kind of, um, it does have a red, but definitely a copper tinge to it, um, and bigger chunks of glitter, of course. Again, on the same vein as that, it's a little bit more finely milled um, glimmer shimmer, and this is from Lit, this is Firecracker, and it's the solid number two, and this is definitely more of a deeper, deeper red. For MAC, I have a liquid liquid last liner. This is Keep It Current. Um, again, more of a burgundy red type tone, but again, it gives you that same kind of feel. And of course, uh, one of my favorite type pencils to use um, and as a base and so forth are from Shiseido. These are the Kajals in Azuki Red. This is kind of a, a burgundy red. And then Rose Pagoda is definitely more of a pinkier red but beautiful nonetheless. Those are phenomenal. Love them. Um, oh, wow, that's really good. Really good. I like this one from, um, from Lethal. Okay, so those are kind of some eye products that I really recommend. Now you can't, if you want a monochromatic look, you're obviously gonna be looking for kind of a red type 
blush. Um, and there are some out there. I am pretty sure there's a lot more than what I obviously have in my collection. I know for sure there's a liquid blush from um, Rare Beauty that's definitely red. But the one I have in my collection is this one. This is Frankly Scarlet by MAC. It's a matte and it's going to give you that been outside. Um, you use it very sparingly or it's going to look very, you know, if you want to look like a clown, that's great. But uh, just use this very, very sparingly. You could also probably use the Sugar Pill one or even the Illamasqua one to kind of give you that red monotone, a monotone, a monochromatic <laughs> kind of look. Um, you could also use your lipstick, pat some and just use it on your cheek. Another one that I think that is, you know, kind of bordering on burgundy is what I'm wearing today. This is the At Night uh, blush by Hourglass. Um, because it has the highlighter kind of in it, it really diffuses and tones down any of that burgundy red that's in there. And this is what you're kind of left with on the cheek right here. Oh, my skin is looking textured. Not know if I like this. Mm, okay. Anyway, that was a side note. <laughs> um, what else do we have? So the next would be, I think, a liquid lipsticks and lipsticks in general. Obviously, the more it's like there's every kind of red you can think of when it comes to lipstick. Um, when it comes again to lipsticks, as I've mentioned, this is going to be the easiest one to find. And there's so many reds out there that obviously I'm not going to mention all of them but I do feel with red lipstick, I want something that's gonna stay put, but it's also very comfortable. Because, you know, you know, if you're talking, red is kinda easily can show up on your teeth. Um, just like anything that's other than a nude, I think that's why I like nudes. Reds that I have that are just absolutely stunning. Um, Velvet Jazz is a deep, these are from um, Lisa Elridge, by the way. So it's a deep kind of Merlot, um, just gorgeous. I love this shade. Very pretty. Velvet Ribbon is your classic red. Kind of more of a cooler tone, cooler tone to it. Um, this one is a Velvet Morning, more of your orangier red warm tone. Love that. Especially when I have a tan. And then Velvet Dragon is your bricky kind of inspired by Chinese like lacquer um type of red very it's it looks like it might be similar to velvet um ribbon but it's not it's more bricky than orange so those are from lisa eldridge beautiful formulation beautiful um colors so some next ones i have here um are kind of like drugstore but also kind of mid-range i want to say um let's start with some drugstore these are from wet and wild these are gorgeous super inexpensive i have it in the shade red velvet and then um stoplight red so uh i find red velvet a little warmer stoplight red's a little bit deeper um more of a like cooler tone this is more of a cherry. This is a fairly new to my collection. This is from Makeup Forever. This is part of the Rouge Artist line. And this is the shade Untamed Fire. Definitely more of a warmer red. I love this shade. Love this shade a lot. Paris is a Rouge Coco uh, number 22 shade. Again, iconic kind of a red. It's a blue based. Beautiful, creamy. Love it. Have you gone bad? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Rare Beauty has uh, their Lip Souffle Creme, which is definitely more of an orangey, corally kind of red. Um, beautiful. I love it wearing this more, I think, when I have a tan, but I could definitely wear it, you know, these days. A good liquid lipstick from the drugstore is the Maybelline um, Matte Ink. I think they're called, that's what they're called. Yeah, Matte Ink Superstay. Uh, and this is in the shade Pioneer. Really beautiful classic red color. Another liquid lip that I quite like is from Dose of Colors. This is Los Angeles. This is a little bit different uh, of a red than what I have. Um, I can't quite describe it. It's kind of um, a corally pinky red, if that makes sense, but really pretty, but there's warmth to it. Um, 
one of the best spreads out there I find in a liquid lip is from NARS. This is their Power Matte and then Star Woman. This is a classic, beautiful blue based red. Um, if you want one that's going to make your teeth look beautiful and just a beautiful red on, I think it suits so many skin tones. Um, some ones from MAC that are absolutely iconic and I think a lot of people associate with MAC, Ruby Woo and Russian Red. Um, Lady Danger for me as well, but that's just because I love the shade. So this is Ruby Woo, a beautiful ruby red color as the name would suggest. Uh, Russian Red is a blue base, a little bit deeper. Um, these are both mattes, I want to say. Yeah, those are mattes. Uh, Chili is also a matte. It's more of a bricky red. For someone who doesn't wear a lot of red, I actually have a lot of reds. Uh, Lady Danger is also a matte, and it's kind of like an orangey red. Iconic. These are like super iconic colors from them. Um, also from that MAC, and very upset that these are gone. Um, these are the Lip Intensities. I have it in Habanero, and then um, Mulling Spices. Habanero is definitely more of a orangey red, and then Mulling Spices had more of a cherry kind of deep red. And then this one is from Besame. Besame is um, a beautiful kind of uh, retro brand. Uh, their packaging is very retro and inspired by um, vintage kind of bullets and so forth. And even the shape of their bullet is kind of more squared off like this. Uh, this is in the shade, I want to say, yeah, Merlot. So beautiful, deep kind of um, deep, deep red. They have a fuel full... There's a red in their line that will suit anyone and that will look beautiful on anyone. Um, thanks for watching and please take care of yourself and take care of others. Please stay safe and um, please like, subscribe. It really helps out my channel. If not, I do appreciate you watching. Take care, guys, and I'll see you later.